Thank you very much for checking out the Men in Nutrition video series. We're going to release all the individual snippets in piecemeal fashion. Today we're going to feature Ladarius Madison. Let's show some love to the individual by liking, commenting, sharing, and connecting via social media with each individual. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoy the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Ladarius Madison, registered dietitian nutritionist in Atlanta, Georgia. So as the story goes, I actually entered the field of nutrition and dietetics by complete accident. I was studying to be a pharmacist. I was um, a biomedical science pre-pharmacy major at Auburn University. And as you may have guessed, the curriculum was heavily rooted in those natural sciences. And I did not enjoy those or enjoy learning about those at all. So it took me about two years or so before I conjured up enough energy to actually talk to somebody and say, hey, I'm not happy studying this. I'm struggling. And so my advisor actually encouraged me during the summer of 2008 to just take intro to nutrition as an elective just to fill my schedule. Well, I took the course and it was like a light bulb went off and I enjoyed it so much. And it was crazy because even though nutrition was very rooted in science as well, I understood it. I understood it so much so that even those concepts and the other courses that I thought I didn't like, they started to make sense. And I think it was because I could visually see what was happening when the way when the body utilized nutrients. Um, so at that point, it was almost a no brainer because it felt natural. I changed my major um, and then started to try to figure out, well, how could I utilize nutrition um, to still get me into the field of medicine? And then someone else introduced me to public health, particularly um, theoretical frameworks and how they can be used to predict behavior change, particularly as it relates to nutrition and the rest is history. So I ultimately finished my degree in nutrition, then went straight into a master's of public health program then into a dietetic internship and then worked for a year and straight into a doctoral program in public health as well. Currently, I'm serving as a nutrition consultant, travel nutrition consultant for an organization here in Atlanta that provides skilled nursing services for facilities in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. I think it would be beneficial to have more men in healthcare in general, not specifically just dietetics, but namely because Research and history both have shown us that men do not often, culturally do not uh, prioritize their health or health care needs the way that women do. And sometimes it can be rooted in a number of different things. In the research, there's talk about provider bias. Um, there's also talk around fear. There's also language that speaks towards anxiety and a whole host of other things. So I think just in general, dietetics being a part of that, but in the healthcare realm and, and, and as a whole, having more men um, in those areas or in those specific disciplines can help to create an atmosphere where men are more comfortable with talking about their concerns. So their questions are heard, their concerns are valid. Um, the treatment modalities are more thorough and or, or rooted in um, sort of evidence and different things like that that help to really just create just an overall better experience, a better healthcare experience altogether. Not specific to one thing, but I will say that as a man, sometimes you do want to see or hear from people that look like you. And when I say people that look like you, it doesn't necessarily always mean by race. Sometimes it can be just by gender, um, if not by gender, then by sexual orientation, but just something that just makes for a more comfortable experience altogether. And so having more men in dietetics would definitely create an atmosphere that's more welcoming, that's more inviting, that's more inclusive, um, and that's not necessarily always skewed or biased towards some of the things that men want to talk about when it comes to nutrition. Um, because I have a background in public health, um, 
my advice to men wanting to take care of their health would be very similar to the advice that I would provide to any of my patients or my clients or my clients' families or whatever the case may be. And that is simply to take charge of your health. Take charge of your health by prioritizing your health. And when I say prioritizing your health and health care needs, I'm referring to spend some time doing some research, looking at the different providers, um, looking at the different services that they provide. Um, looking at the reviews and seeing how other experience how others have experienced those providers because a lot of times we just go to the doctor when something's wrong okay you want to have built enough relationship with your provider or with your physician with your dietitians with your nurses with your nurse practitioners to the point where you feel comfortable talking to them so if something new comes up you don't feel ashamed or you're not concerned about what they're going to think you want to know what's going on and you want to talk to them so i would encourage them or encourage men to just simply take some time to just do a little bit of research and find somebody that you really feel comfortable being with and talking to um i like to say it's like dating you know I have gone, and me myself, I have gone to multiple physicians, multiple doctors, uh, multiple dietitians, multiple, I mean, eye doctors. I've gone to multiple everything until I find the person that I feel most comfortable with who makes my experience a good experience. Because at the end of the day, really what we're providing as clinicians, as practitioners, we're still providing a service. Even though we're here to help you reach your healthcare goals, whatever they are, we're still providing a service. And the customer service aspect of it is what brings people back. So when you find someone, somebody or a place where you can go and be comfortable, um, you can ask your questions free of judgment, you can um, talk it out loud, you can, y'all can have a dialogue more like a friendship or a family member. That's where you want to go. And that's how you prioritize your health. That's how you take care of your health because you feel comfortable. 